Golf Central on YouTube. Brought to you by TaylorMade. Speed Golf back again with Chip Eisenhower and Jaime Diaz. Only have 18 seconds on the clock to answer some of the most pressing questions in golf. It's like Twitter. In real life, you only have so many characters. We start with this. Matthew Wolf, Colin Morikawa, and Victor Hovland all now have a PGA Tour victory. Mm -hmm. Who's going to be the first guy to get his second win? Uh, they, they all will get their second wins, but it'll be the guy that took the longest to get his first, and I'm talking about Victor Hovland. Mm -hmm. And I look at the golf we have coming up. I mean, we've got difficult golf courses, and this guy plays difficult golf courses very well, including majors. Hovland's going to get a second win first. Might have been a longer path, but it might be a more fruitful one. What say you? Well, I, I love Victor and Colin's game. It's really steady. Doesn't necessarily, though, translate to the modern uh, PGA Tour game as well as, as Matthew Wolf's because that long power game tends to, when it's on, win tournaments. And that's what he did at the 3M, and I think he can do it again a little more quickly than the other two who may be more consistent but won't win as often. Is the sustainable flash really going to come into effect? We'll see. What was the bigger Sunday surprise to you? Justin Thomas failing to close a 54-hole lead in Mexico, or Rory, despite his stellar play coming into the week, Another just so close to a win, but not quite there. I have to say surprising. Not so much that JT didn't close because he's done eight out of 11, and that's hard to do is close, but he just didn't play very well, and I thought he would meet the moment a little better. I'm sure he's disappointed. You expected him, especially on that golf course with his driving and his wedge play, to do something special on Sunday, and he just didn't. It was surprising. He wasn't alone, but it was way off. Wasn't yeah, it? he was off. And, and you know, the key to what we're seeing out of Roy McIlroy and others is how bad, how their bad golf is really good. They put down a good score on a bad day. He had a bad day and didn't put down a good score. It just was how bad his misses were. They were beyond the point he could recover. So that'd be the one thing for me. Get a little better at that. Unusual to watch on a Sunday, especially at a WGC. Okay, sticking with the Rory theme here, mm -hmm. it's now his sixth straight top five finish worldwide for him. Is the glass half full or half empty because he hasn't converted? It's three quarters full. Mm -hmm. It's the way beyond half full. Look, the guy's in contention every week. He's played 20 rounds on the PGA Tour this season. Only three of them are outside the 60s. He's 66 under par. He's right there every week, but he already has a win at the WGC HSBC. We're so critical. Are we being too hard on him? Not at all. I think three eighths full is what I would say. Only because yes, the consistency is great, but it's got it's about winning for somebody at Rory's level. He's number one in the world. Plus, he's getting ready for Augusta, and he's got to meet that moment. It's going to be a lot of pressure. He wants to feel confident he can close on Sunday, and I think he needs a couple of better finishes before Augusta before he can really feel secure in that. He's been reading up about how yeah. to mentally manage something going on on Sunday. Got to figure it out. All right, Jaime Brooks Kepka headlines yeah. the field at the Honda Classic this week, but he's dropped to number three in the world. How important is it going to be for him to have a big week? this week in particular? I don't think it's important at this point. I think right now his narrative has gone from rivalry to rehab. He's got to get healthy. This knee thing is a big deal. And long term, that's what's important for Brooks Kepka. I'm sure he's chopping at the bit to get back in number one and show everybody what he's got. But this isn't the right time to do that. Right now, just take it slow and let it happen. You can't be number one again if you never get healthy, can you? That's true. In the long-term perspective, Jaime is exactly right. I mean, you don't want any short-term gain to outdo any, you know, to keep long-term pain going. But look, this is a course he finished second on last year. It's a home game for him. It's a difficult major type setup. I would start reading a little bit into Brooks' uh, form going forward if he doesn't have a decent week this week. Okay, not quite the panic button, but no. you're circling. Yeah. Okay, finally. <laughs> Every player at the PGA National this week is going to have to navigate the beer trap. That scary stretch of holes from 15 to 17. Is this the toughest stretch in PGA Tour golf? Toughest, yes. Not the best, though, because, I mean, these holes are so hard, and you can throw a big number up at any time. I mean, 15, if the prevailing wind, the traditional wind that you have with those three holes, uh, you can hit multiple balls in the water, and we've seen it happen time and time again. You can rack up some big numbers. Yeah, it's like the count over time is up to over 1,000 golf balls in the water in that stretch, so that says something. I think it's physically the toughest in terms of the big number you can make, but I think mentally toughest because of what's at stake, the Players' Championship is PGA Tour Sawgrass. Excuse me, PGA Sawgrass. And, uh, Sorry, TPC Sawgrass. Yes. <laughs> and and it, it is just simply the most pressure with 16, 17, and 18. 18 especially, that's the toughest drive, I think, for a 72nd hole in a big event. Yeah, it's hard to argue that, and I think mm -hmm. a lot of players would say mm -hmm. one of the three that we mentioned. So yeah. The green know, mile, we'll, throw the green mile we'll, in there. We'll argue yeah. this forever. <laughs>